Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to my channel. Now in today's video, we're going to be talking about how to make a note taking app in React. Now this is another great project for beginners or intermediate programmers who are new to React and just want to, you know, hone in their skills. And this is uh, just a fun app to build overall. So this is what we're going to be building today. It's just, you know, note taker, place to put your epic thoughts. You could enter your, uh, you know, whatever note you'd like, click submit, and it'll just add it right below here. And we can just keep adding different types of notes and whatever you want, and it'll just, you know, continue to add them below here. So without further ado, let's just hop right into the video. All right, guys, so to begin this project, the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and open up a command prompt and, you know, get to a directory that you'd actually like to create this project in. And then all we're going to do is type in create-react-app, and then go ahead and type in the name of the app that you'd like to create. And ours is called Note Taker App. So click Enter. It'll run some commands in the background here and set up our blank project for us. All right, guys, as you see here, our um, project is created. So go ahead and open up the source directory and open up your app.js uh, file here. And we're going to make some initial changes. So the first thing that I want to do is go ahead and erase all this stuff um, inside of this app div. Leave this here. Fix this bracket because it's ugly. And uh, sorry for all of you guys out there who like to leave it like that. Um, and then the final thing we're going to do is say um, import and then brackets use state from React. Um, and we're going to use that um, later on in our project. All right, guys, now the first thing that I want to do is go ahead and set up like a basic UI. Um, and then after that, we're going to make the UI actually work. So the first thing we need is just put a H1 tag here and we're going to call it note taker. And then right below that, we're going to put a paragraph tag. We're going to say um, a place to put your epic thoughts and go ahead and save that. Just let's make sure we have our project up and running here. So in the same directory, go ahead and or sorry, um, in the directory of all your projects, uh, switch to the directory where your project is actually located and then go ahead and type npm start and that should launch our um, local dev server on port 3000 here and as you see we have a new browser window open and this is what our app looks like as it stands but i'm going to just move this over here for a second while we finish building the ui all right guys now right below this paragraph tag we're going to create a div and then in there, we're going to give it a class name of something we haven't quite made yet, and it's going to be called form holder. And that's just, um, you know, saying that we're going to hold a form of some sort in here. This is where all the input and stuff's going to happen. Another thing I want to do is go ahead and install Bootstrap. So go ahead and open up your command prompt window and make sure you're inside of the directory of the app. And then we're going to type in npm space i space bootstrap. And that will go ahead and install the bootstrap package. And it's done now, so we could type in npm start again. Really, the only thing we need to do here is go ahead and import Bootstrap in so that we can use it throughout our project. So go to index.js. And then we're just going to paste this little line in here. So click enter once and paste this. It's just Bootstrap slash all this stuff. Um, it's importing the CSS file. Um, that way, we can reference it um, throughout our project and make it, things look pretty. All right, guys, so I had you import the Bootstrap library, and the great reason for that is because now we're going to reference a class in that CSS file that is used to you know, organize things nicely. So we're going to just create a div here. It's going to be called div, and then class name of mb-3. And then inside of this div is where we're going to have some various elements here. So the first thing we're going to do is put a label and it's going to be HTML4. That's just like the four, um, but in React it's HTML4 that because, you know, syntactically it, it interferes with other things. The thing that this is going to be labeled for is called note. So we still have to make that, but that's what we're going to call it. We're going to give this a class name of form-label. And then the actual text inside of it is going to be notes with a capital N and a colon. All right, guys, now right below that label, let's create the text field that is um, that label is actually for. So we're going to say input. Uh, add a closing tag like this and then give yourself a couple lines of space and the only reason i'm doing this is because we're going to have a couple of uh, various properties to set on here and it's nicer to just put them on different lines than all in one line so the first thing we're going to do is um, type in type equals text because it's going to be a text field then our class name is going to be one of the bootstrap ones form dash control our id for it is going to be um, note and also the same thing with the name as well or sorry the name is going to be note and then the placeholder is going to be um, enter a note here with a couple dots and that's all we're going to need for now 
Now, right below that, we're going to add a break line. And then finally, we're going to need a button. And the easiest way to pick out a button is to just go to the Bootstrap's uh, site. So let's type in Bootstrap. And let's just go and look at their docs. Um, I always like to use the same button just because I really like the way it looks. But you guys can pick whatever button you want. So scroll down here to where it says buttons. And then we're just going to choose either one of these buttons or one of these or, you know, one of these outlines buttons as well. Um, like I said, I like to use this primary one because it looks cool. So I'm going to take this and we're going to go back to our React code here. And then we're going to paste that there. And instead of primary, we're going to uh, type in submit. All right, guys, so we have an initial um, couple of elements here that we have laid out. So let's take a look at our UI and see where it's at. So if we bring this over here, this is kind of what it looks like now. It's not as close as what it looks like at the beginning of the video, but we're going to get there at some point. All right, guys, before we move on, we're going to go ahead and edit the CSS stuff um, to make it look prettier. So let's open up our app.css file. All right, guys, we're going to create a form holder class back here. So dot form holder. And that's just going to be a width of 50%. And then we're going to go ahead and delete this app header class because it's not even used anymore. And then we're going to go up to where it says app here and then adjust some of these properties. So the first thing I want to do is give it a minimum height. That's going to be of 100 uh, VH here. Um, our display is going to be flex. Our flex direction is going to be column. We're going to align the item items to be uh, centered here. Justify content is going to be center. And then the color is going to be white. And then finally, at the very top, let's go ahead and make a background color of. It's going to be hashtag 282C34. So now if you look at our app, it looks a little bit like this. And this is exactly how it looked like, um, you know, uh, at the beginning of the video when I showed you. The only thing we're missing is this text should probably be a little bit off to the, or at least this stuff and this stuff should be um, off to the left in terms of where it's actually lined at. And guys, all we need to do to fix that is just go to your form, form holder class here and type in text dash align. And we're going to put left as the property. And now if we go back to our um, UI here, we'll notice it has a nice centered title and um, you know a little subtitle here, but note and the button and all the text and stuff is over to the left, which is what we want. All right, guys, so now that we have that knocked out of the way, we can go ahead and close our CSS and our index.js file. And now we're really going to be working out of this one for the rest of the tutorial. All right, guys, so let's think about how we're going to make this work. So we have this um, basic text field here and a button. Anytime the button is clicked, that's when we need to take the value from the text field and store it somewhere and then basically display that value uh, with the array of previous values down below for us to view as the user. We know that this button has to trigger some stuff in the back end um, and really it just triggers everything. And this is only really in charge of capturing some sort of value. So now that we have that in mind, let's take that logic and then apply it to our code. Now you guys remember earlier in the, in the video, I had you import this use state stuff at the um, top and we're going to use state um, in order to keep track of all these values for this, these components here. So what you want to do is first we're going to create a const and then open up your brackets here. We're going to call this variable um, note. And this note is going to be the current note that lives inside of the text field. And then the function we're going to make that modifies this note value is going to be called set note like this. Remember that is going to be cool. Use state with um, just empty quotes in here. Now, the other variable we're going to need is something to store, you know, all the previous notes that we have in the session. We're going to call this const current notes, comma, and then we're going to call it set current notes for the function. And that's going to be equal to use state. And then inside of here, we're actually going to create an empty um, set of brackets. And that's just going to initialize this as an empty array for this current notes value. All right, guys, so now we need some functions that um, are in charge of, you know, handling whenever the button is actually clicked. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down here to where the button tag is, and we're going to add something called on click, and that is going to be equal to handle click. And now we need to create this handle click function. So go right above your return statement, and we're going to give ourselves some room here. We're going to say const handle click is equal to empty set of uh, parentheses here, space equals, and then this um, kind of make this arrow symbol, and then we're going to open up some brackets. So we have this handle click function here that we know fires anytime that the button is clicked. So now we know we intend to save a note anytime this is clicked. And what you need to do is we need to modify 
the array of notes that we are storing. So go ahead and put some empty brackets and then call this um, function here that is in charge of modifying this. Not only do we need to save the notes we already have, you know, that we've already had from the past, um, we also need to add the new note in. So we need to say dot, 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 current notes. So that'll say, hey, include everything that we already have, and then comma, and the new thing that we want to add onto it is this note value. So note is the new note that was just captured, and current notes is everything we already have stored from the past. I think it would also be useful to just go ahead and uh, log this to the console to make sure things are being captured. So I think what we're going to do is just output the current notes array to the console. Now, there's two other things that we need, um, and one of them is going to be to modify this input thing here. So let's just click Enter underneath placeholder, and we need two different things. One, we're going to need an onChange um, field here, and any time that this is changed, we need to um, basically say like, hey, I see the user is typing down here. And, you know, they can click that submit button at any time that they want. So as they're changing it, why not um, capture that value and make sure to store it in this note variable? So what we're going to do is we're going to say on change is equal to and then call it handle change. And now we're going to take this handle change thing and make a um, new function up above. But before I do that, one more um, change down here is we're also going to say value is equal to note. And that's just saying like, you know, the value of the text field is whatever this note thing's set to, which should be whatever this handle change thing made it. So whatever's in the text box currently should be what is really displayed in the text box. So right above handle click, we're going to say const handle change is equal to. And then inside of these parentheses, we're going to say event because anytime that this change thing happens, it actually does send an event um, to this function here. And we kind of need to parse it to get the actual value we want out of it. And it's super simple. We're just going to call this set note um, field here. So set note is what we use to modify this note variable. And then in here, we're going to say event dot target dot value. So what this is saying is like, hey, the user started typing, it's issuing one of these events to this handle change function. Um, and inside of that event, we can parse through it and get the value of that text field and then go ahead and set it equal to this note thing or this note variable. Sorry. All right, guys. So now that we have that out of the way, let's go ahead and test out our app and make sure that it's working how we want it to up to this point. All right, guys, we have our app here. Let's go ahead and click, um, you know, inspect and open up the dev tools here to make sure that we can see what's happening in the console. And you will notice as I'm entering in various things, it is going to be added to the array each and every time, which is awesome. So we know that it's actually storing things properly, which is good. So now that we know we're storing it properly, we need a way to actually display it. And, you know, all of our previous notes are right below where we're entering in the notes. So now let's make a table that we can do that. All right, guys, so inside of your app um, tag here, but below your form holder one from before, we're going to make another div. And that is also going to have a class name of NB-3. And here's where we can do a little bit of checking. So let's open up these brackets. And that's going to basically tell it like, hey, we're ready to use some JavaScript now. Um, and in here, we're going to make a check to see if any note is currently stored inside of this current notes array. So the way we do that is the following. We're going to say current notes dot length. Basically, hey, if it's equal to zero, we're going to say, you know, question mark. This is the first um, part of the if, if you will. Basically, if it if it is true, it'll fire here. And then we can say this colon. And this is the kind of the else. And then anything down here when it's false will fire. If the notes length is zero, we know there are no notes stored in there currently. So we could just make a little paragraph tag here. We can say no notes to display. But in the event that we actually do have notes and it is um, true that the length is not zero down here, we can create a table. And in this table, we're going to need a, um, a header and just one column. Basically, we're going to just say, oops, sorry, not TD. We want TH. And in here, we're going to say um, note. And then underneath T head, we're going to have T body. And then we're going to have um, various rows and, and things of data in here. Now you might ask yourself, you know, Sean, how the heck am I going to dynamically build rows based off what this um, array thing um, is holding? And let me tell you, 
It's very simple. All we need is some more brackets here because it's intermingled with HTML. So we need to kind of tell it again that we're going to use some JavaScript here. And what we're going to do is call the array, so current notes, and we're going to call dot map. And dot map is super useful function. And we're going to use it here to kind of iterate over this array and then output, um, you know, each value at each index. So we're going to say dot map and then open up parentheses. And then we're also going to need another set of parentheses. And in here is going to be n short for note. And then we're going to say um, space. And then we're going to put this little arrow symbol here and then open up some parentheses and click enter. Now inside of this, you know, every time that it iterates over something in current notes, what do we want to do? Well, we need to create a table row, first of all and table data because there's one column. So we need one thing of data here. And in here, we're just going to put n. Actually, I just remember you need to put n inside of brackets as well. Basically, it's going to iterate over this. And for each index, it's just going to, you know, wrap it in this table row and table data um, tags and then just put it inside of the T body. So guys, that should be basically it for our app. Let's go ahead and test it here. Um, let me open up the console here. You'll notice all of our notes from the past are already here, but let me refresh the page. So you'll notice our uh, statement that checks how long the array is is working because there are no notes to display at this time. So let's say, um, I don't know, I want to go to the store later. Let's click submit here. And you'll notice now there is a brand new column down here and it says I want to go to the store later. And now maybe I have another note like, you know, remember to call my mom and click submit. And now, as you see, each time we click submit, it stores a brand new value inside of our table. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I had a fun time doing it and I hope you did too. Um, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and comment down below any thoughts or suggestions for the next video. Um, go ahead and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. And with that said, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.